Hello, my name is Jeremy Scream and I'm an Ironspeed MVP. In this video we will be discussing encrypting and decrypting your data within an Ironspeed Designer 12 project. In particular we will be discussing two areas of encryption decryption. Session encryption decryption and database encryption decryption. With session based encryption and decryption Ironspeed has provided us with two functions, encrypt and decrypt. Respectively, these functions return the encrypted, decrypted value of the, spring, of the string passed to the function. Furthermore, they encrypt, decrypt using the encryption key and session ID, so they can only encrypt, decrypt values that were decrypted or encrypted within the same session of the application. Use these functions to encrypt, decrypt URL parameters and other application runtime values. They are not recommended for in the encryption or decryption of values coming to or and from the database. A few additional ways to work with session encryption and decryption. One, modify redirect URL is a function that ensures any manually constructed URL is properly encrypted. For example, the URL that I present here, http colon my app slash customers show customer dot ASPX with the customer equal to two. If you pass this string into the modify redirect URL function, it will properly encrypt the customer ID of two and send that to the form that's being called. The second example that I present here is the URL function. This built-in IronSpeed designer formula or function allows you to retrieve a URL parameter without specifically calling the decrypt. If encryption is enabled, the URL formula function will return the decrypted value. If encryption is not enabled, the URL formula or function will return the URL parameter without decrypting the value. The second type of encryption we'll be covering is database encryption decryption. These use the built-in IronSpeed functions encrypt data and decrypt data. Respectively, these functions return the encrypted or decrypted value of the string passed to them. They encrypt or decrypt using an encryption key, but do not use the session ID. This makes them ideally suited for encrypting or decrypting data from a database or when you include them in a URL within an email. These functions are not recommended for encryption or decryption of URL parameters within an application. Now let's switch over to our project and take a look at some of these encryption and decryption functions that work within an IronSpeed Designer version 12 project. So here we are within an IronSpeed version 12 demo project built using the Southwind database that ships with IronSpeed Designer. At this point we've pointed the application at the database and done no customization. The first type of encryption decryption I'd like to show you is the database encryption or decryption. The one that we talked about using encrypt data and decrypt data. Not dependent on session IDs, strictly used for encrypting and decrypting data when inserting and retrieving from our database. Typically we do this on a password field within a security table. I haven't enabled security for this application. The concept will be the same. I'm just going to show you how to encrypt or decrypt data using an email address field. So clicking on the database tab, going into the customers table, clicking on the email address field, we can then go over here to the property sheet and initialize when inserting record currently is disabled. If we go over here to the ellipsis, enable that, and then set this to the function in the security functions to encrypt data. What do we want to encrypt? We want to encrypt the value of the email address variable which comes from our DB record email address. Clicking OK here we see that whenever we insert a record through the business layer into our database that value is going to be encrypted and then stored into the database in an encrypted fashion. In order to make that meaningful when we retrieve it we're going to have to initialize when reading the record to decrypt the data. Again a very similar function Enable that. We're going to set the formula to 
again this time decrypt data and we're going to decrypt the database record email address field so now whenever our data is written to the database it'll be encrypted whenever we read the value from the database it'll be decrypted and able to be rendered within the screen that about sums it up for database encryption there's plenty of things you can do with that depending on your needs important thing to remember is to use the encrypt data and decrypt data now let's focus on session based encryption let's go back over to our layout edi editor and just to make sure we have encryption enabled let's go to tools configure application and within our security property make sure the value of encrypt URL parameters is set to yes that's the default value and unless you've changed it it should be set to yes and you should be ready to go all URL parameters should be being encrypted by default from an iron speed generated project now that we've verified that our URL parameters are being encrypted by default let's take a look at how this works behind the scenes our default show customers table is going to give us access to the cust all the customers which from there we can pick a, an individual customer the show customer form has a customer's record control within that record control there's an orders table control child panel within the actions panel of the orders table control if we were to add a new order for this customer we can see that the pre-built iron speed behavior out of the box says that whenever we add a new order from the orders panel that's a subchild of the customer table control we're going to navigate to a specific URL within a modal pop-up passing a URL parameter of customer ID equals and then the customer record control field value customer ID the second tab of that wizard you can change that if needed but in this case it's exactly what we want to happen once we click that new button and go to the add orders if we find the customer ID field we'll see that iron speed has again by default initialized that that foreign key field is going to initialize from a URL customer ID so whenever we call and add orders and pass a customer ID parameter with a value Ironspeed will grab that value and initialize that customer for us within the order so let's run our project and see how this all comes together for us our default start page was the show customers table if we were to pick on any individual customer and go to the show record we'll see that up here if you notice our URL because we have the setting to encrypt URL parameters by default instead of seeing customers equals some integer ID key field we have customers equals and then a long encrypted value one level of security that is nice and built in for us and nothing we really had to do to work for that now if we add an order notice that the add orders form is grabbing the URL parameter of the customer and defaulting that value even though it's encrypted because we use the URL function it went ahead and decrypted it and initialized that field for us I'm not going to complete this add order but I just wanted to show you how all that comes together for us now let's see if we can fabricate an example just so you can see how all this is working I'm going to create a new form within the orders folder and I'm going to call it my orders page go ahead and build that now within the my orders page I'm going to drop a data entry form for orders 
and I'm going to select the add record panel type just to get rid of all the extras the only thing I'm going to have on this form is the customer ID again this is a fabricated example just to give you an idea of what's going on let's drill down into the fields and then over here in our toolbox let's go to fields add another label for customer ID and another field for customer ID the first customer ID we're going to initialize to the URL customer ID the second customer ID we're going to initialize to the URL customer ID 1 and I'll show you what the difference between those two are when we get to the form that we'll be calling this from the important thing to know at this time is that customer ID and customer ID 1 are being initialized from two different URL parameters well, let's go over to our show customers form and set up those parameters in order to get this as close to the raw code as we can I'm going to add a themed button I'm going to call it my add button and under the button properties I'm going to set the text to my add button and the tooltip to my custom add button then within the button actions going to set the actions property to custom I'm going to go ahead and build the project and then once the project's finished building we close this dialog go to the click event of this button and work with this code Because this is a live recorded demo, I'm going to cheat and go over here and grab some code that I wrote earlier. But I'll explain this line by line as I go through it. So let's take all of this, copy it. Let's overwrite everything in here. All right, so let's review this code first thing I've done is declared a URL string print string variable and initialize that to orders my orders page with a question mark and the my orders page is the page that we just built over here with the two customer ID fields on it and then this part we don't have to worry too much about starting in the try we're going to begin a transaction which we do anytime we use database retrieval or update code. Then we're going to declare a variable LOC rec as customer record control. We're going to initialize that to the convert type of the me.page. Find control recursively, finding a, a control named customers record control and converting it to type customers record control. Next, we're going to declare a customer rec as customer's record and initialize that equal to loc rec dot get record which basically once we find this control recursively we go ahead and do the get record which retrieves the record from the database and sets that up as a customer record for us now we're going to declare the customer ID LC cust ID as a string equal to the record we just received dot customer ID field and we're going to declare a second parameter cust id2 as a string and set that equal to the base formula utils dot encrypt lc cust id so that is taking the cust id variable that we retrieve from the customer record control and encrypting it for us manually now we're going to add these two customer id and customer id1 variables to our URL string that we're going to pass to the my orders page 
And then here we're going to call the me.modify redirect URL. Again, as, de as described in our slides, this is going to encrypt any unencrypted values for us. If we run into any problems, we're going to catch that in an exception. We're going to throw a JavaScript error and we're going to tell the form not to redirect. And then last, we're going to end the transaction. So if we've gotten this far, or we haven't thrown any errors, we're going to call the me.page.response.redirect, passing the URL that we built by sending that string to the modify redirect URL. So let's run this again. And when our show customer table page appears, we'll look at Antonio Marino Tequera. And if we go to the action and use the My Add button that we manually coded to use the U redirect URL, we'll see that when we get to the My Orders page, we have two customer ID parameters, customer ID equals and customer ID one equals. They both have the same value. Both controls were initialized using the URL function. And so that, I just wanted to show you that you can manually encrypt these. You can use the modify redirect URL and a lot of the functions that I showed in the initial slides. To summarize, in this video, we we review database encryption and session encryption. With database encryption, we use the functions encrypt data and decrypt data. With session encryption, we use the functions encrypt and decrypt. The difference being session encryption requires a session ID in order to decrypt a value that was encrypted during that session. Database encryption can encrypt or decrypt data across sessions, making it more useful for database encryption and retrieval. When passing a URL, be sure to use the modify redirect URL function to ensure all values are encrypted. When accessing URL parameters, use the URL function to ensure any encrypted values are decrypted. I hope you found this video useful. For more information, visit ironspeed.com and browse through the plethora of information from user forums to documentation, videos, and online help. Thanks for watching.